So today we're going to review adding and subtracting decimals. And we're mostly going to do this with examples, but I wanted to show us something first. So um, if we look here, it kind of goes through the steps. But the biggest piece I want us to take away from our lesson today is that for adding and subtracting decimals, if you line up the decimals, all you have to do from there is either add or subtract like you've always been doing. So in this first example, if they're going this way, we want to make sure we stack them. So stack them up, and then once those decimals are stacked, you can just add down the columns, okay? So write in vertical column, aligning the decimal points, and then add each column starting at the right, carry digits when needed, okay? So just adding like you've always added. Then for subtraction, again, line them up in, vert in the vertical column and make sure that those decimals are lined up. That is the big part of adding and subtracting decimals. So line them up, subtract each column, starting on the right, working left, borrow as needed, okay? We're gonna go through a couple of examples of that so that you have um, reminded your brain what that looks like, and then you'll be good to go for our work today. Okay, adding and subtracting decimals is just as easy and adding and subtracting that you've been doing since you started school. So the only thing that changes is that they have to line up. So if I have, for example, 26 and 3 tenths plus, say, 31 and 76 hundredths, I'm going to want to line these up when I stack them going to want to stack them, but I'm going to line them up so that the decimals line up, okay? Always stack so that you easily can see your work. Now, just so I remember that there is a number here and I don't start adding here, I can place a zero. I'm going to put that in a different color so we can see that I've added that. I can put that zero there because 30th, sorry, 30 hundredths and 3 tenths are the same thing. So putting that zero there just in order to add is just a placeholder. Okay. So then 6 plus 0, 6, 7 plus 3, 10. So a zero goes down, a one goes up. Like I said, just like you've been doing. Because what you just did there was you took two parts and you've now made one whole. So they need to come over here on this side of the decimal. So just carry it over like you've always done. Eight and five. Now, I just move that decimal down. Okay, so for adding, you really are just adding, but you have to line up your decimal. Okay, let's do a subtraction part. So now I can't switch order and subtraction. So let's say that it's 79 and 32 hundredths minus 25 and 2 tenths with that. Okay, so I have to put it in this order when I stack, and I have to stack so that I can see everything. Minus 25. Same thing. Sorry for the squeaky pen. Same thing. I can put a zero down here. That's not changing my number in any way, because two tenth and twentieth hundredths is the same thing. So then I subtract. Two minus zero. 2, 3 minus 2, 1, 9 minus 5, 4, 7 minus 2, 5. That one didn't have any car carrying, borrowing, any of that. Okay, so we're going to do one more that does just so you have a good example of what that would look like. So this time let's say it's 62 and 3 tenths minus 40 five and one tenth. Oh, sorry. And five tenths. 
So for this one, I, again, I can't change the order when stacking. I have to do it bigger number minus smaller number. Now, when we are subtracting this five here, that's why I changed it because I wanted to talk about this. So three tenths minus five tenths. I can't do that because three tenths is smaller than five tenths. So what I'm doing here is I am breaking this two up, this two whole, okay? It's gonna become one whole, right? And what's coming over here is what I'm really bringing over because we're on this side of the decimal is I'm breaking up that one whole number into 10 pieces so that this is no longer three tens. And since I've moved that whole, that's 10 tens I've brought over there. So this is now 13 tens that, I've, that I have. Because I take the 10 tens from the one that came over and the three tens that were already there, and I now have 13 tens. I can do 13 minus five. That's eight. Okay? So since I moved that one over for the tens, tenths to use, I only have one left here. So that I also can't do, but now we're into dealing with holes. So I'm take, breaking apart these 10, taking one of the set of 10 and putting it here. That's why that becomes 11, and this will become five. 11 minus five I can do, which is six, and five minus four I can do, which is one. If you're good, it's the same borrowing you were doing before. It does not change, it just goes to that side of the decimal.